Hello guys, so I actually got some really good feedback on my last video and you said that you would like to see some tutorials because I was just saying I don't know if I feel particularly comfortable doing tutorials. I know I've done them in the past but I know one of my tutorials were a bit under scrutiny because it was a very bad tutorial and I filmed it thinking that no one was ever going to watch it and it turns out it's now one of my most popular videos so that was a big mistake, but just a little disclaimer, I am by no means an expert, I am a self-taught artist, I am 17 years old, and I've still got a long way to go. However, I do feel very comfortable with drawing eyes, and ever since I was very young I've been drawing eyes. It's something I've been practicing for a long time, and obviously I think practice makes perfect. I'm not perfect yet, but I can tell you what I do know from my years of experience. Same thing goes for noses and lips. I don't think I'll be doing a tutorial on them, probably not for like another year or so, just because I'm not at a point where I feel like I can show you a fully rendered nose or mouth and do a tutorial out of it. I don't think it will be very beneficial for anyone, but I do think I can give an eye tutorial, so that is what I'll be doing today, and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the very basics, which is how to sketch out an eye. And for the sake of simplicity and just teaching you very basic stuff, I'm not going to go into looking at an eye from different angles and the iris being um, looking in different directions, stuff like that. Today we're just going to look at how to draw a very basic simple eye, just so you can understand um, how I do it. So, you're going to start off by making a shape like this. And you have to remember if you're drawing different ethnicities and stuff, um, sometimes the eyes can be a little bit different. Um, so if you do struggle with that, maybe use a reference picture. I normally use a reference picture when I'm doing the iris and the pupil inside the eye, just so I can... Because um, the iris has all these different patterns inside of it and it's quite hard to get right. So. Um, that's why I use reference for that. And never be ashamed of using reference because that's the only way you're going to learn in the first place. Uh, and then I add the eye crease above this. And I know this is really like sketchy and chicken scratchy right now. It's going to just be a basic sketch so it doesn't really matter too much. The, I think this is the tear duct here. You've got to just add that in. Okay, so then you're going to have a waterline, which is going to come around there. And basically I use two lines to demonstrate that the waterline is there. And then I add a little bit of an under eye crease. So, the next stage is adding in the actual iris. And I used to make the mistake of drawing this small, and it's actually a lot bigger than you'd think. Watch the waterline here, so you have to make sure you've made your eye big enough to do that. Then in the middle I'm just going to add the pupil, so I just draw a little circle for that. And that's basically where the pupil is going to end up going. And then eyelashes is the last part. So you have to remember, um, and I used to do this as well, I used to draw eyes, so say that's our eye. But for the eyelashes, I just would draw like straight lines, and that is not how eyelashes look at all. They come, um, they don't just go all in one direction, they come at all different angles, and also you have to remember that they are kind of curved. So if I'm going to draw eyelashes over here, they're going to look a bit like that, and they're going to have a slight curve to them. Whereas in the middle, less, it's going to be pointing less and less. To that side and then as we get over here it starts going in that direction kind of but if you do struggle with the eyelashes I'd say definitely look at a reference picture and just for the sake of this video I'm gonna add in an eyebrow as well okay so now we have our basic sketch of an eye and an eyebrow hopefully that was easy enough for you to follow along and now I'm going to go into the colouring aspect. So the next part is establishing the colours that you're going to use. So I'm going to select a colour for the skin. So and I'll just this can be as messy as you like, especially because I haven't drawn the rest of the features of the face 
I am just going to be quite messy with this. Okay, the next part in the white part of the eye, but I don't actually tend to use um, white for this. I will use a kind of um, slightly darker white, so not really a white. When I choose a colour for the eye, I will make sure that the saturation is really um, low down because you're not going to get a really bright green eye like that. Okay, so on to the next step. I am going to add a layer above the basic colours that we've added and I set this to multiply but I will turn the opacity of this down so because there's a crease here there normally tends to be a shadow from where that crease is so I added like a shadow along there and then um, a good way to think about shadows and highlights is what areas protrude in your face and which areas um, don't. The brow bone here, that kind of comes out a bit, so this part will be highlighted. Whereas under the eye, we have this crease here and that's going to cause a shadow along here. Okay, so obviously uh, this looks a bit weird at the moment because it's a purpley colour, so I'm going to go into hue and saturation and I'll probably make this a little bit more pinkish or red. I think that is a good colour for it. May, might turn down the luminescence but up the saturation a bit. Okay, there we go. To highlight the whole area, I like to use the colour picker and colour pick the skin colour and then I'll set the layer to luminosity turn the opacity down and make it slightly more yellow and then I will add the highlights to the areas that are more highlighted so around here this area here is more highlighted as well I find sometimes in the middle of the eyelid here is quite highlighted and same for underneath and then also a little bit here and I'm going to blur these bits a little bit and with this layer I'm going to set to multiply so we can see a bit better but I'm turning the opacity down so we can really work in terms of highlights and shadows because I think that's so important when you're doing um, an illustration you've got to bear in mind where your highlights are and where the shadows are because that's what makes that's what gives it that sense of depth and makes it look a little bit more realistic even if you're not aiming for realism and you're still doing like digital paintings of um, cartoony type characters like what I kind of do um, it's still important to bear it in mind so your shading looks good so I've just used a basic grey for the eye and I've set it to multiply and I'll turn the opacity of that down a bit and I will bl blur it out a little bit then we repeat the same thing again but this time with the more localised shading so around these edges here it's going to go in a lot more especially in this corner that tends to get quite dark and also around here we're going to add a bit of shadow basically my rule of thumb really for um, is that the right phrase is basically just to judge it by eye which is quite funny because it's an eye tutorial but um, basically judge it by eye and just kind of think where are the shadows and highlights going to fall and I definitely find thinking in terms of what areas you want to stick out and what areas you want to go in um, it's very important so these corners here are going in because obviously the eyeball let me just draw it over this obviously the eyeball is a 3d shape oh the, I accidentally created a line work layer okay so the eyeball is a 3d shape this is gonna be our eyeball <laughs> looks a bit weird and a bit freaky but here's our eyeball and obviously in these corners just like with any kind of spherical object um, those corners are going to be there's going to be more shadows on the edges so shadowing around here especially if you've got the skin coming over and that's going to cast a shadow so you are going to end up with more more shadows in areas like the corners here because it, the eyeball is basically a sphere and that's the edges of the sphere that's the way I think of it and also they're coming inwards so they're going in so you need to use shadows to make it um, 
darker and also this bit here this bit of the iris here is coming out a bit so we want that bits area to be lighter so it does look like it's coming out so that is important to keep in mind and actually um I don't really tend to add the eyelashes until I am completely and utterly finished with the colouring process so I'm going to get rid of the eyelashes for now and it is going to look a little bit weird. Okay so you've now merged those layers together and I'm going to carry on by using my oil water brush that I was using and blending everything together. So I will speed up this process but basically to, to kind of um, give you a rough idea of what I'm doing, in large areas like this I will be using the brush with very high blending and lower density so I can blend it and give it a very soft look like that whereas in areas that are quite that need to have a sharp sharper edge to it and less soft and blended out because that can look quite blurry and muddy I'll up the density and turn the blending down so it looks more like this and then it's important that you keep switching back to the color picking tool so you can blend this edge out a little bit more and then I will go in with my blending up a lot and blend this all out again but we want this edge here to be quite sharp so that is why I don't usually like blend it with that up quite high so I'm going to go ahead and speed up this next part and hopefully you can see what I'm doing roughly but I am planning on doing a more in-depth tutorial on how I uh, use my painterly style to basically blend everything together so without further ado I'm going to go start blending. <music> Okay, so I'm done with blending everything out on the eye that I drew under the sketch layer. So this is just a very rough idea of what we want. But obviously it does look a bit ridiculous, it looks like a really over photoshopped eye that has incredibly smooth skin around it and um, in reality no one's skin looks like that and also we are missing any kind of highlights and anything like that. So. Basically, I will go into detail about how I do this point and if you're looking at this and thinking how did you get from that to um, this point, well basically what I did was blend all the colours together um, like how you would do with an actual painting really and hopefully that was easy enough to follow but like I said I will be doing an in-depth tutorial on how to do like the painterly style. So now at this point we are finally going to use white because and this will help show you how why I didn't use white on this bit if we have a highlight going across you can see that it's got a highlight whereas if that was white here then we wouldn't be able to see the highlight so that's important to remember also do this on a new layer just in case you mess up the highlight so what I like to do is I basically just kind of draw some shapes in. Sometimes you'll get like a window reflection on an eye. I'm just gonna do one like this today. So I'm drawing in two very basic shapes for a highlight and just gonna add little bits to it. So along this top bit here you might have a bit of highlights going on up there also down here you're going to have some highlights across here because it's the tear duct and it's kind of watery here so you can show that just by adding these white areas and um, if you are struggling with that I say definitely look at reference um, I'm looking at reference for the tear duct right now as well. Um, then I think we should make this a little bit bigger. This little highlight. 
and then I'm going to add another bit here and another little bit there add some highlights along across here as well also I'm going to add some highlights up round here okay but we're not done yet because hang on I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit so it's not too bright. We are then going to get an eraser tool and I'm going to use that to oh, make sure your minimum size is on 0%. Okay, so now I'm going to use that to rub out marks on it, like reflections from the eyelashes. Obviously that doesn't work too well when we don't have any actual eyelashes on the drawing. So this is when I add in the eyelashes. So I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna rub out a little bit more. It's a bit too much rubbed out. So merge that down. Then on a new layer, I'm going to use, I'm not gonna use black, I'm gonna use like a grey colour. I'm using the oil water brush again. Actually no I'm not. I'm going to use uh, the sketch brush. But I am going to turn the density down to about 87 and your eyelashes come out from this point here and I need a bit of a thicker brush for this. So basically doing very similar to what I did in the sketch, I am just gonna judge by eye basically where I think these should go. So we end up with this, and I'm quite happy with that, but we can still add more details. There is never enough details. So, like I said, the skin looks a little bit too overly um, perfect, and also it's lacking a bit of detail. So, what do we do to fix this? Well, I create. I like to create a luminosity layer. Um, I drop that area here, and um, forgotten which pen it is. It's one of my pens. Okay. So I have a brush here that is basically just a pencil, but with a specific texture on it, and it's called B Platts. And if you look this up on the internet, you should be able to find this brush. But um, what this is, is that it kind of creates like a dotted particle effect kind of thing. So I use this on the areas that are lighter. And remember to do this in a layer above the skin layer. Don't make the mistake of doing it elsewhere. So I just kind of scatter that all round and I'll turn the op opacity down to about 54% and with an eraser on a small dense, low density I'm just gonna rub it out where in the areas that um, isn't aren't too light I'm still going to um, keep some elements of it so we just end up with some um, light bits all around the skin. Okay, then I'm going to get that same brush again, the one that we used for the highlights and I'm actually going to use this just to add like more texture to the skin, just so it looks a little bit like freckly kind of, or like blemishes, stuff like that. And I'm just going to add that and set that to multiply. Okay, so this is the final eye that we end up with. And I'm really happy with how it came out. And obviously, once you know all the... Um, once you know the basics, you can then interpret that into your own style. So, 
once you are well aware of how to draw an eye and how an eye looks and stuff like that you can then change certain things like you might change um it to have a smaller iris or you can draw really large eyes in your drawings if that's your um drawing style anything like that it's completely up to you but um as with anything it's always important to go over the basics first um so you're aware of how everything looks and obviously um my drawing isn't perfect it it's not it i wouldn't i'm not really aiming for it to be photorealistic i'm just trying to show you how to draw an eye in um the most basic way i can kind of show you so i really hope this was um helpful for you and i'm sorry that i had to speed up the bit where i am blending in everything together because that would just take forever to show you in a video and it would be really really hard to explain as well and i don't want this video to be too long so anyway i really hope you found this helpful and i will see you in next week's video Thank you.